Greetings, programs. My name is Wretch, and I'd like to welcome you to Supposedly Wonderful Future. Now, this game has a very interesting description on Steam. It's a science fiction story told through small rooms, screens, and existential dread. That's, that definitely got my attention. And um, I was sent an advanced copy of the game. It releases tomorrow on April 18th. And it's a point-and-click style game, but it uses RPG-style dialogue options to further the story along, kind of like the Telltale series. So I'm kind of curious to see where it's going to go, what the story is really about. And um, we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. And if it's a game that you all would like me to go ahead and keep on playing, just let me know in the comments. Uh, we'll see what happens. In the meantime, we will uh, start a new game. I figure it kind of reminds me of Memento with all the random like uh, photographs and scenes. I wonder if it's going to have to deal with like memories. Only one way to find out. Have you ever imagined a day like this would come? You know, I probably have. I tend to wonder about all kinds of crazy stuff. The power of imagination, eh? Too bad I can't feel these things anymore. I'm just a sad and tired old man. A lonely failure at the top of the world. Is there anything I can do to make you reconsider? No. Let's finish this. Prologue. An unlikely visitor. Well, that definitely sets a tone. Wednesday, July 18th, 2018. Not your favorite way to start a story. The exact date is rarely that important. It's just a convention, you know? An arbitrary system made up by humans to count the Earth's rotations. Still, they say you have to understand your place in time and space. Then again, they say a lot of pretentious things. And usually you can't even tell for sure who the heck they are supposed to be. Regardless, the day is young, so you decide to go with the flow and proceed into the office. The sun is shining shamelessly through the window, no doubt on its evil quest to sneak UV radiation past the ozone layer again. You take a look around, slowly acknowledging the environment that didn't even exist six months ago, but already feels comfortably familiar. Your own business. No bosses, no rules, no bureaucracy, only projects to use your skills on, and real clients to make happy. It's a tiny company, of course, just two programmer friends who decide to go official. Nothing special. Thousands of people try to do the same thing all around the world. Still, even more people would call it crazy. Too risky, they'd say. No guarantee of success, no clear way to rise above the competition, and dozens of ways to go bankrupt. They'd prefer the illusion of secure employment, with crippling bureaucracy, pointless rules, and no sense of meaningful impact whatsoever, even if they hate it all as much as the next guy. And you're a long way from proving those folks wrong, but you haven't proven them right either. The clients are coming. The clients are satisfied, enough to keep you busy, and enough to keep you happy with your bank account. The clients have grand plans, and they trust you will turn them into reality. Perhaps this is how good life decisions should look like. Daring enough to feel crazy, yet logical enough to be real. They say you need to step out of your comfort zone, but you don't have to do it every day. That's the thing about zones. Whenever you leave one, you very quickly find yourself inside another. Today, you can embrace the routine and keep making this new zone more comfy. As you look around, you notice the familiar blinking of the phone on your desk. Seems like Samuel, your fearless partner in crime, has left you a message. You should probably check it out if you're when you're done admiring the surroundings. Okay, so... Oh, we've got highlights. There's the phone. That's a nice little office, I have to say. Um, let's play some darts first. Well... Could have been worse. Hmm. It's actually not bad. Bingo. Must be my lucky streak. Or maybe not. 
Or maybe it is. Ooh, trip 18s. No, probably not. Ugh, what's the point? When you're not good at it, it's like a random generated event. <laughs> oh, crap. H have you guys ever done that before? I have. Ah. Oh. Okay, well, that's darts. Put a nice new hole in the wall. That's what happens. Um, let's check the board. Zero days without new holes in the wall. <laughs> uh, video call with Mitch. E-learning stuff demo. Video call with Mitch, most likely. Meeting with XPRT. Discuss data. Gen T visualization system launch. E-learning alpha testing. R&D support system demo. Gen T project deadline. Party hard. Game storming. Trails in the sky. Mega Man. Uh, speed run super meat boy like a boss. YS Origin, Caress of Steel, Summer Cell, Reckless Spending. These guys got their priorities straight. Replay, Romance, Garas, LucasArts Classic, Nostalgia Night, huzzah. Trick Mitch into trying Skyrim. Maybe he'll have less time to nag us about features. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. Hmm. Priority, Observation, Hypothesis, Experiment, Conclusion. The Scientific Process. Screw. A very agile management framework. The complete guide. The definitive guide to screw. Screw. The rules of the game. So this must be maybe the game that they're working on? Rule 1. Do not use screw. Rule 2. Do not use screw. Rule 3. Accept that the world is an utterly chaotic place and there is nothing you can do about it. Embrace the chaos. Rule 4. Sprints should be done outside in a nice park or inside on a treadmill. All other sprints are a waste of time. Rule 5. Consult the screw master every time you suspect you're starting to use screw after all. How does one become a screw master? Rule 6. Product Poner is the only person who can add new items to the product backlog. It is therefore strongly advised to keep him safely locked up at all times so the product backlog doesn't interfere with the product front log. Rule 7. Sprint Retrospective is a time-boxed event where you either contemplate the fleeting nature of time and existence, or just keep your mouth shut and stop spoiling the silence. Rule 8. The definition of done should be clear and shared within a team, as well as definitions of every word included in that definition, though it depends on your definition of definition, really. Rule 9. Newly implemented features should be demonstrated to stakeholders, pole dancers, flag carriers, and professional contortionists for their valuable input. Rule 10. There are no errors. There is testing. There are no exceptions. There are conditionals. There is no deadline. There are versions. There are no managers. There are users. There is no crash. There is support. You got to say that like a mantra. You know what I mean? Rule 11. Plans are a lie. There are only variables. Through variables, I gain source. Through source, I gain binaries. <laughs> Through binaries, I gain tests. Through tests, my bugs are broken. The code shall set me free. Yes. Well done. Nice uh, Knights of the Old Republic Sith reference there. Huzzah. Rule 12. If everything else fails, scream screw this at the top of your lungs and play some video games. That is sound life advice. Oh, I'm so proud of this. We should put it on a single page website and proclaim as our manifesto. Okay, we haven't even got to the phone call yet. That guy is a very patient man. And it's 2018. Bookshelves are used for anything but books. Alright, are we pretty much done with all of that? Alright, to the phone call it is. You have three new messages. Um, let's play the message from the earliest one, 9.54 a.m. Hi, Mike. This is Andy from Ghent. Or, we'll say Gent. I checked things with the higher-ups yesterday. Unfortunately, IE support 7 support is a must. And yes, I'm going to say it out loud so you don't have to. We are the dinosaurs. Our OS is hopelessly outdated and we can't even install applications without triggering a bureaucratic nightmare. 
I was hoping until the very end that our case might warrant an exception. It's a visual visualization system, for heaven's sakes, but they said no. There's nothing I can do about it. Hopefully this will change as our cooperation bears fruit, but for now I'm sorry to drop more work on you so close to launch. Let me know how it goes in a couple of days, okay? 10.05 Michael, this is Mitch. I think we need to make some design changes to the customer feedback form. The fields are a bit too wide and the font just doesn't feel right. Also, would it be possible to change how calculation results are displayed? Specifically, I'd like all extra chunks to appear on the same page rather than in pop-ups. I know there's not enough space, but maybe restructure it a bit? Please let me know ASAP. 1047. Hey dude, so I spent last night talking with the expert guys, and it looks quite promising. They don't have any deadlines in mind yet, and definitely worry more about quality than speed, which is just the way you like it. I've emailed you the details. Might be hard to juggle both this and gent, but hey, too much work is better than no work at all. Don't worry about my part. I'm gonna code till I drop. Speaking of parts, can you, uh, give me a raise? Yeah, I know, we manage our own raises. Just trying to give you a proper boss experience in preparation for our inevitable world conquering expansion. Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Sam out. Um, uh, hi? You open the door to find a woman standing on your doorstep. She seems agitated and a little out of breath, with tiny beads of sweat showing up on her forehead. She looks at you and immediately lets out a sign of relief. Oh, a sign of relief? Uh, morning, Mr. Morton. Whew, I'm so glad I finally found you. Um, sure? It was pretty maddening for a moment. A labyrinth of back alleys and weird intersections. Our records must have been wrong. I had no idea where I was going. Uh, I'm sorry, but do I know you? Oh, well, this is awkward. That's not how I should have started at all, is it? You can try and start again if you want to. I'm, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Morton. You are Michael D. Morton, aren't you? Yes. The thing is, I have a proposition for you, and I believe you will find it most interesting. Can I have a moment of your time to discuss it? My name is Jackie, by the way. Hmm. Sure thing, Jackie. Here, have a seat. Right on the couch. The woman takes a place on your couch as offered. Overall, it looks like she's managed to regain her composure. Can I get you something to drink? Uh, no, that's quite all right. Thank you. I do apologize for the sudden visit. Simply showing up on your doorstep is not how proper business negotiations should start, but my circumstances are quite restricting. Now, you don't have to worry about corporate etiquette here, Jackie. We're a small company. We're flexible and we concentrate on what matters. Thanks, that's very kind of you. Let's get right to it then. I'd like to offer you a job. Uh, well... I appreciate you coming to us, but unfortunately we're already at full capacity. Perhaps a couple of months down the road might suit you? Uh, oh no, not a job for your company, Mr. Morton. A job for you, as a person. Uh, ooh. You, but I already have a job. That's kind of the reason why I'm in this office to begin with. You can do both. The job specifics make it a very special case. Besides, it's useful to have a fallback plan, even if the main plan is working flawlessly. Hmm. Alright. Um, I'll humor you, but be warned there's very little chance of me getting interested. Thank you. Now, Mr. Morton, the offer I'm about to give involves taking talking about rather unusual things. Things that might sound unbelievable at first, so here's a general plan I'd like to propose. First, I'll make a far-reaching claim. Then we'll talk about it in more detail. You're free to ask any questions to determine whether the said claim is true or not. In fact, I'd like you to. Then you get to decide if it's actually true. Does it sound like something you could spend a little bit of your time on? 
the claim being, I come from the future. Okay, keep going. I work for a company called Life Plus, one of the leading experts in all things technological. Barely an hour ago, I traveled 30 years back in time because our scientists recently, and quite unexpectedly to everyone but themselves, might I add, cracked the secret to time traveling. This is the first field test, and you are our first contact. The job I'm offering involves coming back with me to the year 2048 and working together on a special project. Uh, okay, Jackie, one thing at a time. Tell me about your future. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. No nuclear apocalypse, no ecological disasters, no machine uprising, no catastrophes at all. No, it's been pretty peaceful. Much more peaceful, in fact, than your current time. Regional conflicts and global tensions are solved in peaceful ways. Economic inequality has been reduced greatly. High school level education is available to everyone. Child mortality and poverty are exceedingly rare. The entire world has access to clean water, vaccination, and other necessities. Hmm. That's cool. Any flying cars yet? No, but we had some amazing technological breakthroughs as well. For example, there's the matter of us not aging anymore. What? what? Sorry? Well, there's this medical procedure called cells and tissue renewal process, or just the renewal, or however you want to call it. If you go through it, you stop aging for 10 years. After that, you can do it again, so it's possible to never get old. And if you don't get old, your risk of age-related illnesses is reduced accordingly. Was that a fancy way to say live forever? Are you telling me you're immortal? You can use that term if you like, yes. It's definitely the closest we've ever been to immortality. Y you're joking. This, this part has to be a joke. I understand how it may sound, but it's true. There's no need to go searching for examples. I myself am 61 years old. Though I suppose there's no way I can prove it to you right here and now. How, how does that even work? Do you take a magic pill and stop aging? No, it's a bit more complicated. You have to go through some injections, treatments, and diagnostics for a couple of days. I think it's supposed to clear your body of accumulated waste, though I'm not the best person to explain the science behind it. But it works. The best minds on the planet made sure of that. But that changes everything. Like, literally everything. It will eventually. At the moment, however, most of the consequences are yet to come. It's been 15 years since the first successful trial, and much less since the renewal became commonly available, so people are still processing the idea. You don't have to worry about our society being too different from yours. Yeah, but like overpopulation, man, like, eesh. maybe that's something you have to sacrifice in order to live forever. You can't have kids anymore. Uh, definitely not a Logan's Run kind of situation. What kind of special project are we talking about? You will have to solve a series of problems with no possibility to turn back halfway through. It will be a mutually beneficial experience. You will learn about our society as you work on them. That's rather vague. That's intentional, I'm afraid. The nature of the problems requires you to be uninformed beforehand. How many problems? How long will it take? 5. Each taking a single day. Logistics are already planned and everything is ready for you. 5 days of your time is all we need. Why would you need someone from the past to solve your problems? Two words. Outsider's perspective. You're not part of our society, therefore you do not possess our dispositions and are completely free from bias. We believe this quality is important enough to justify the entire convoluted scheme. What 
kind of problems could your bright future possibly have? A great deal of many, to be honest. Every miraculous technology has a downside. People are often struggling with downsides, and if not, they're just coping with change. A lot of psychological adjustment needs to happen. Not to mention that improvement is endless, and there are two new problems hiding behind a solution to every old one. For all our achievements, humanity is still at the beginning of a very long road. And how exactly do you expect me to solve them? Mostly with your mind, Mr. Morton. The human mind is an extremely valuable asset even 30 years down the road. So, no turning back. Isn't it too big of a commitment for an abstract set of unknown challenges? I can assure that every problem will be perfectly solvable by a man of your skills, but I can also cannot describe them in more detail. That is something you'll have to see with your own eyes. When do you want me to start? Right after we finish this conversation. We can be in 2048 in less than an hour. Why the hurry? You can have all the time in the world if you can travel it. It's not that simple. Every altering of the past requires a lot of preparations and calculations. More time spent between our offer and your decision means more altering, and I'm afraid that's not something we can afford. It's just a limitation of our unique situation. And when it ends, what do I get out of it? Well, there are two options. One, you can come back here and return to your daily life. Everything will remain the same, except yourself. We can't offer you any financial incentive, but on every other account, it will be a life-changing experience, as you might imagine. And the other? You get to stay. You can join us in the future, where science is stronger, society is better, and you can live a much longer and happier life. And here's, here's the real question. And why are you interested in me, exactly? Because we want you to join us. We want to share our bright future with people of the past who worked so hard to make it possible. This is our way to use time traveling for the greater good. We owe previous generations that much. <laughs> the greater good. Hmm. Uh, in this case, shouldn't you go more, go more than 30 years back? I'm 29. I think I stand a pretty good chance to join you conventionally. Unless she has, can't tell me that I died. You... You won't. Excuse me? You're no longer alive in 2048. Time traveling is the only way for you to reach it. Uh, I'm sorry. You mean I died earlier? Uh, how? When? I can't tell you any details. Get information about your future life is unsafe. Hmm. Now wait a second, lady. You can't drop a bomb like this and expect me to ignore it. I, I know, but that's kind of important part of the story, don't you think? Were you even going to tell me? I was sure you were going to ask, precisely because it's so important. Unsafe. If simply telling details is unsafe, what does it make inviting me to the future? I I'm sorry, that was a poor choice of words. What I meant to say is that everything's unsafe unless you spend a lot of resources simulating possible outcomes, ensuring that cascading changes won't spiral out of control. And while we did that for everything directly related to our proposition, we had to leave out a lot of extra things, so... I'm quite limited in what I can say. Like, how can you know any... The future isn't written yet. No, but some events are more persistent than others. Even if you remove the cause, something else will trigger them, as if the universe gravitates toward it. Your death appears to be one of those events. Oh, so we're a fixed point in time? Ugh. I've watched Doctor Who. I know what that means. <laughs> I... I'm not sure how to react to that. You don't have to react at all. Just take into consideration when giving your final answer. Like, w won't it screw things up on your end? 
Pulling somebody out of their timeline is a serious change, and by messing with 2018, you're messing with 2048 as well. It will cause ripples, but not necessarily in a profound way. The degree of uncertainty, de uncertainty depends on the person in question. Pulling you out won't change too much. That's why you're a suitable candidate. Well, I don't feel like an ins insignificant spec right now. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean it that way. You do affect the world around you, of course. Everyone does. I just wanted to say it'd be safe for you to make such a different turn. How can you even estimate such complex stuff? I thought it was supposed to be hopelessly unpredictable. We can. That's the whole point. An advanced computer can build a mathematical model of an incredibly complex situation and then calculate all probabilities. Proper risk management is one of the best perks of our time. Still, why me and not some other guy? Oh, we, we'll carry on to some other guy once your integration into our society is over, and then to another guy. It's a long-term project. No ladies? But it's also a very resource-demanding project, so we need to do it carefully and one person at a time. You're the first. How come I'm the first? I must have millions of people to choose from. Consider it winning a lottery, a highly unlikely but statistically possible event. So I'm officially the chosen one. You're a chosen one, to be precise. One of the group. Details. Certainly. Well then. Yes? I still have a few more questions. Of course. I'll answer to the best of my ability. Do you have any proof on you? Something to support all these claims? I'm afraid nothing I can show here and now will convince you. After all, you will, won't be able to tell whether my tangible evidence is real or fake. No, the only way to prove my story is to take you to 2048 with me. How exactly are you planning to travel back to the future? Do you have a time machine hidden around the corner? No, the piece of technology itself is actually small enough to be lying in my pocket, but will have to be in a certain place. The closest suitable location is well within walking distance. You have a time machine lying in your pocket. Yes. Shame. I was hoping for a DeLorean. Possible to design, but a bit oversized. Also too conspicuous. Well, that's pretty cool. I'm glad you like it. Can I take a look? There's really no point. It's just an ordinary block with a touch screen. Not much different from a remote control or a mobile form. Or mobile. Mobile phone. I'm not sure I can fit into such a small time machine. That won't be necessary. The only requirement for transportation is your physical presence near the device. You can leave all other technical details to me. And how does this work exactly? You're asking the wrong person. I know the user interface. Aware of potential hiccups and appropriate reactions as well. No matter how unlikely these hiccups are, our meticulous scientists made sure of that, but the actual physics behind it are still a mystery to me. Alright. Like I said, a little walk is all we need. So where are we going? Just an alleyway, really. The location itself is not so important. The calculations we did beforehand are... By deciding on a certain place and a certain time, we can run a simulation and estimate our chances of being spotted or traced. That particular alleyway offered the best combination of proximity and absolute privacy. You want me to follow you into a dark alley? Really? Please, Mr. Morton. It's the middle of a bright and sunny day. Besides, if I was a common criminal, don't you think I'd try to lure you out with something less wild and more believable? Yeah, you do make sense. Thanks. I like to think it's one of my strong points. Okay, guys. I think now would be a good time to go ahead and end this uh, episode now. Can we go ahead and save? Yes, we can. Cool. We will save right here.
and confirm as new save. And we'll go ahead and end it here. It's a very interesting premise so far. It's not what I expected, like time travel just suddenly out of the blue. But um, good deal. Um, if you guys want me to keep playing this, please let me know in the comments because I think I would like to go ahead and give it a shot. Um, but definitely just let me know in the comments what you think of the game. It's available on Steam tomorrow on April 18th. And uh, yeah, good times. But if you guys liked it, please leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help. And we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.